It's your boy Bill, man. I appreciate everybody been supporting me. Getting that merch. I appreciate you. I'm talking about two, three of them left. If you haven't got a shout out yet, just bear with me, please. The My laptop that I be reading from had went out. So I took it back to the folks. They supposed to be getting it right. But if not, I'm going to just have to buy another one. So I ain't got nothing to read off of right now. So just bear with me within the next few days. I should have had that situated. And everybody else to get their shout out. In the prison, especially prisons I've been at, man, level five prisons in Georgia, you got situations where people will stand up for other individuals or stick their neck out there or whatever. But it's very rare that, like, if you live in a certain type of way and you doing wrong, especially something that's frowned upon from a lot of people, it's very rare that when you get caught up in a situation, you get spared. That that damn near never happens. So I'm gonna tell y'all about this little dude named Stone Mountain. Now, of course, that's not his real name, but that's where he's from. You know, he come to dorm, people like, where you from, bro? He be like, Stone Mountain. It's just, it just sticks easier, easier to remember. So a lot of times people get nicknames about what they look like, where they from, how tall they is, all kind of stuff. Now, this dude was 20 years old, bro. The roommate I had just had had got caught with a phone and went to the hole. I had a room by myself for probably like a week. I was in the room by myself. Then I got a new roommate. Little dude came in there, little light brown skinned dude, about my height, kind of a little smaller than me. He come in the room, first thing I asked him, bro, you affiliated? He say, nah. I said, have you ever been affiliated? He say, nah. Now, you know, I ain't got nothing against it. It's just I needed to know who I was living around. And then certain affiliations just wasn't going to be in my room, period. R really, almost anyone, like, if, if I'm affiliated with something and you come in my room and you affiliated with something else, the first thing I'm going to probably try to do is get one of my guys that's affiliated with what I am. I'm going to try to move them in my room and put you over there wherever they just came from. But sometimes you be in a room with different groups, so... Sometimes it don't matter. I don't have different roommates that's affiliated, but that's just the first question I have always asked all my roommates. I'm like, bro, how old are you? He said, like, 20. Like, where you from? Stone Mountain. I'm like, how long have you been locked up? Man said, probably about a good five, six months. I said, five, six months? He said, yeah, I was only in the county for a minute. They just shipped me from the county. Then I went to Jackson. Jackson is the diagnostic prison. He like, I went to Jackson. I was only there for like two weeks and then they sent me straight here. Now, this is another thing, right? I had reached a point in my bed where if you're fresh into the prison, like this is your first time you have never been here, I had reached a point, I ain't gonna lie to you, where I started making people leave out my room. Like if you come in there like how he did and you tell me you just got locked up, I really reached a point where I tell them, nah, bro, you can't be in here. You got to go somewhere else. Because when you brand new to the prison, bro, and it may sound kind of selfish because I was brand new once upon a time, so I understand it. But when you brand new, bro, it's so much stuff you don't know. It's like, I feel like I'm almost like your parent or something. Like, you got to teach a new person everything about the prison. You got to teach them do's and don'ts. Do this. Don't do that. Don't touch that. It's okay to touch that. Don't look over there when people doing this. Oh, no, nah, that lingo means this. And it get real frustrating sometimes, man. Like, you got kids in a prison, you know what I'm saying? So I had reached the point where I'm like, hell no, nah, bro. So I told him, I asked him, once he told me, like, five, six months, I asked him, I was like, is this your first time in prison? Have you ever been locked up before? And he gonna start smiling, talking about, I only been in here five, six months. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, I ain't asked you that. I asked you, was this your first time? So I told him off the dribble when he put his mat down, because he was talking to me with the stuff in his hand still. He put his mat down. I was like, nah, hold on real quick, bro. Hold up, because you might not you might not finna be in here. Hold up. He going to say, well, this is my assigned room. I said, I don't give a... Bro, hold up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I walked out the room. Now, a lot of people was asking me, how does that whole assigned room thing work? Because I thought the officer assigned you to whatever room. Yeah, that's true, but bro, in the level five prisons, the prison damn near run itself. I mean, the police will do stuff certain times, but like, okay, if this dude come in my room and I say, nah, you can't be in here, bro. You got to go over there to that room. It's another open room. Even though that's not his assigned room, what are they going to do? If he go to the police and say, 
hey man, I can't get in my assigned room. Dude said, what the rule? Then the police come to me and say, Bill, why you don't want the man to be in the room? And then I tell them, for whatever my reasoning is, could be some gang stuff, could be where we from, it could be whatever reason. And then I say, hey bro, officer, I don't want the man in here. If you know he coming here, we're gonna get into it, I'm gonna end up busting him with the candy bar. So then just say, for instance, the officer say, well, you heard what I said, he gonna come in his room, which sometimes does happen. So then they take him and force him in your room. And then two hours later, he getting pulled out real bad with the candy bar bleeding everywhere. Then once everybody can vouch and say, yeah, Bill did talk to the officer and told her it was going to be an issue, the officer would get in trouble. Because it's like, damn, you really could have avoided somebody getting hurt, if not the worst. So when an inmate on some stuff like that, most of the time, they just let it ride with whatever you say. But sometimes they do try to book and force somebody in your room. So it was like two open rooms in the dorm besides mine. So I went down there to the first dude room. I asked him, I'm like, hey, bro, I got a new roommate, but I ain't rocking. I ain't, I ain't trying to have him come in here, bro. I'm trying to see if uh, if I could pay you to burn to let him come in your room. That's how you really get people to get in the room with somebody. Because if he assigned to come to my room, but this dude got an open room, he don't want no roommate. But if I pay him, he'll take the roommate. So I asked the first dude, he like, hell no. Nah. So I go ask the second dude. I'm like, hey, bro, I got a new roommate. I really, I'm trying to ride out by myself a little longer. I'm trying to see if I could pay him. This dude's name is Tags. Like Tags, like Tags on the clothes, on some clothes or something. Tags is an old school dude. He been locked up ever since he was a teenager, I think. He had a little motion going on in the dorm. He had him a phone. He, he ran store. He was the store man, too. He kept all the food. People used to borrow food from him all the time. So the dude Tags was like, how much you trying to pay me? I was like, I'll give you 25 dollars He was like, Bill, boy, that ain't enough. You got to come on better than that, Bill. So I was like, I'll give you old nifty. If y'all don't know what it is, a nifty is just a nickname for $50. Like people say, old nifty 50. I was like, I'll give you old nifty. So he said, boy, come on with it. Need that. So I went back down into my room. I told uh, dude Stone Mountain, I'm like, hey, little bro, you going down to uh, such and such. So he was like, well, the officer told me this is my assigned room. I was like, yeah, I understand that, but you going down to such and such. I don't want no roommate right now, bro. So he just was looking at me. And then he picked this stuff up. I walked out the room with him, walked him down there. I was like, yeah, this Taz, Taz, this stone mount. So he like, uh, you know, they talk, bro, threw all his stuff on the top bunk. I went and got my phone, came back down at the Taz room, cashed up him $50. Man, probably about two days go by. Taz come walking back down here to me. He like, he's shaking his head. He like, nope, nope, ain't gonna work. I'm like, what's up? He was like, bro, just cause I rock with you, I got respect for you. He said, if you let him come back to your room, I'll send you your 50 back. He was like, but if not, I'm about to put him on a dope. And if if you, you know, that 50 bought over with, bro, you, we made a deal. So if I put him on a dope, you can't feel no type of way. I said, man, I don't give a damn. You put somebody on a dope, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I gave you the 50 to get him out of my room. Whatever you do after that ain't got nothing to do with me. So he's like, all right, I'm just making sure. I'm like, well, what he did, though? He was like, bro, he too green, bro. He don't know nothing, bro. Like, I got my stuff over here on the table. He coming over here touching stuff. Then the man just keep talking so much, bro. Like, he won't be quiet. Like, he think he, he, think he in damn high school or something, bro. Just don't know nothing. Like, green as a pool table, bro. I don't know. Hell no, nah, I can't do that. So... I told him, I don't care, bro. I don't care. You do what you do. I'm in my room chilling. I come out the room. I think I was going to holler at one of my bros. And when I come out, bro, I see the little dude walking down the steps with all his property in his hand. And I look at him, bro. And, bro, I don't know what it was. Like, I, got a, I got a little brother that's 10 years younger than me, bro. And I damn near was like his daddy before I got locked up. I'm talking about I used to not go to school to be home, watch him take care of him change his diapers. I was the only one allowed to whoop him. If one of my other brothers whoop him and my mama find out, she might go outside their head with a pot or a pan. Like, cause she knew it was genuine with me. My other brothers, they about throw the hell up. I see the dude walking. I'm looking at the little young dude. He said he was 20. At that time, I think I was 26. My little brother was 16, but I promise you, just they build, they skin complexion, the way he had his little hair, like with the little waves, 
I promise you, he just reminded me of my little brother so much, bro. His looks while, you know, I've been locked up. I ain't seen my little brother in so long. I really felt kind of bad. I seen little dude walking over there going to the door. So I went and hollered at my home, but we real quick, whatever it is we would talk about. Then I walked down the steps. I went over there to the door. I'm like, what's up, little bro? Where you going? He was like, man, I'm going to the hole, bro. I ain't, I'm going to just go to the hole and see if I can get in the better dorm. I'm like, what happened out there? He was like, man, he just tripping, bro. He keeps saying I'm doing stuff wrong. Like, you know, I don't really know how to, he kept saying I don't know how to chain game, bro. This is my first time, bro. And it made me feel bad, bro. So I was like, bro, come back up to the room. You straight. He was like, bro, I don't want no issues, bro. I ain't trying to fight nobody. I ain't trying to, I ain't, I don't want no smoke, bro. I said, I don't want no smoke neither, but it's cool, bro. You can come up here. And I told him, like, bro, I really just, I don't be wanting new people in my room because I don't be wanting to have to sit here and go over everything with you about the chain gang stuff. Then you got some people don't listen. Then I might sit here and invest all this time into talking to you. And then you might go to the hole tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't be liking to do that. But I said, bro, it's straight. I don't want to see you get put on the door. He go back up to the room. But later on, tag, see he like, oh, you can deal with it, but I can't deal with it. Your tolerance is a little better than mine. He said, I got a life sentence, bro. I got to be here forever. My roommates be long-term roommates. I can't afford to have nobody in my room five, ten years, and they acting like that. Nah, hell no. Nah. So I said, yeah, bro, it's all good. And at that time, I had like two years left to go. So I'm like, well, if he do end up in here this long, I don't care, bro. It is what it is. I just didn't want to do it at first. But like I say, looking at him, talking to him, listening to how green he is, bro, it kind of made me feel like this my little brother. Like, it really reminds me of my little brother. Then I think I went to feeling bad. Like, damn, God forbid. But if this was my little brother in this situation, I wouldn't want nobody to just put him on a dope, throw him to the woods, treat him any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I can't do little bro like that. So we get back in the room. And off the top of my head, I just go to thinking about all the things. Like, I just go to think about the stuff that is important, that needs to be said, you know what I'm saying, off the dribble. When he go put his stuff on the top bunk, I tell him straight up, like, we both land, like, the way I lay is like this way, my head facing that back wall, my feet over here by the toilet. So he set his up the same way. So while he, like, making his bed up, he's all the way over, standing all the way almost towards the wall, towards the back wall. So I just went to tell him the rules. I say, listen to me, little bro. You see how close you is to that end of that bed where I be lying at? He like, yeah. I said, if I'm ever in the bed, do not ever stand all the way over there like that, bro. Because it's like, not your whole body region right here in my face. That's extremely disrespectful. And that can get you placed in some crazy situations. He was like, all right. I just wanted to tell him everything. Like, when you brush your teeth, do not spit nothing in that sink. You always spit in the toilet. Then I went to tell him about the courtesy flush rule when you use the bathroom. Man, as soon as it come out your body and hit the water, you need to be flushing that toilet. Leave that door open when you get done. Make sure you clean up. Make sure you leave out the room every day for a few hours. We not both finna be in here all day together, all day, every day. Make sure we give each other space. Uh, don't touch nothing in my box. I ain't gonna touch nothing in your box. Don't sit on my bed. I just went to tell him all the all the basic stuff I could think of. So he like, I right, bet, cool. So I leave out one day. Y'all know I had a little job. So I'm out on the job one day. I come back into the dorm, and when I'm coming in, I see tags walking out my room laughing. And I hear him saying, all right, little bro, I got you, I got you. So I'm wondering, you know what he got going on. One of my guys called me. I go over there. I thought it was about to be something about what I just seen, but it was something totally unrelated. It had nothing to do with that. So after I holler at bro, I go back upstairs to my room. I see my roommate in there laid back on the top bunk like this, scrolling. He on the phone. I know it's Tag's phone. Tag's be selling phone time. So I look down on the floor. It's a net bag with food in it. Just for me doing my eyeball estimation, I... I say it's about $15 worth of food in that net bag. I just know, bro. I done dealt with it for so many years. So I don't say nothing to him because you know he on the phone. I don't really talk to nobody when they on their phone time talking to their family. So he like, what's up, Bill? So I look up at him. I'm like, what's going on, little bro? So I wash my hands, you know, untuck my shirt. Just get ready to do what I'm about to do. So he like, man, just chilling. Just got some phone time from Taz, man. He just gave me a, he just gave me a good deal. I was waiting for you to get back. 
so I could ask you what you think first, but man, I just went ahead and did it. It's a good deal. So like I say, bro, I just be having back and forth type moments. Like one minute I'd be feeling like, yeah, I don't give a damn what you do. Do what you do. And then one minute I'd be like, Bill, bro, hell no, no better, bro. You got to show him. But it's like, I'm not your daddy. I don't got to show you nothing. So I asked him while I'm in my locker box doing whatever I'm doing. I'm like, well, what the good deal is? So while he talking, I go grab the tissue. I put the tissue in the door. Now, that's another thing I'm skeptic of, pulling out my phone in front of a new roommate. I don't know how long you're going to be in this room with me. I don't know if you're going to get mad at me and go tell the folks. I just ain't care. I felt like he was... All right, as far as that, for the most part. So I get go to my hiding spot. I'm pulling the phone out while he talking to me. So he say, I think I'm tripping at first. He say, yeah, man, Tad said he gave me that bag of food down there. It's, 20, it's worth $25. And he going to give me an hour a day on the phone every day for $25. Now, this is the thing. Yeah, an hour a day on the phone for $25, that is how much it costs. But it's for a certain amount of time, seven days. So I asked him, I said, well, how much? How many days does he give you? So he like, man, he said, I can just ride out. It ain't no limit on it. Red flag off the dribble. He's selling phone time to make a profit. If he gives you $25, if you give him $25, and he give you an hour a day every day with no limitations on the phone, he's hustling backwards. His phone bill is 50 a month. He can't even pay his phone bill like that by letting you ride out infinite for $25. It's usually 25 a week. So I'm like, bro, so so he said he gave you a big old bag of food plus an hour a day, every day on the phone for $25. No limitations. There's no expiration on his phone time. So he said, no. Nah. He was like, what you think? So, you know, I'm unlocking my phone. I'm reading some of my text. So I was responding to him kind of slow. And then when I got done doing what I'm doing, I threw the phone back on the bed. I say, listen, bro, I'm going to just tell you like this. That don't make sense. It really don't sound right. Ain't nobody giving you 25, ain't nobody giving you an hour a day for $25. And there's no limits on that. It stops somewhere. And giving you a bag of food. I said, how much food is that? He said, it's a $25 cash out. I said, so what, that's about $15? He said, yeah, I knew it was. I had already eyeballed it. I knew what it was. So I'm like, damn. So this man gave you, it just don't make sense, bro. So he was like, I don't know, bro, but it sounds good. That's what he said. So me feeling like I'm in big brother mode and me being in the dorm with Tags for a while, I know he's chain gang to death and he, you know, he'll act, he'll act crazy about them little zooms and whams. That's a nickname for snacks and drinks. Uh, like chips, pies, drinks, they call it Zooms and Whams. The scene has act stupid before about it, so I know how he get down. Me feeling like I'm in big brother mode, I, I, I tell him, I say, look, bro, but at, the, but at the same time, I don't want to sound like a hater because this is how beef gets started. I got a phone. I sell phone time sometimes. You're my roommate, so if you give me $25, you're going to ultimately end up getting way more time because it might be a day I'm not doing nothing. Huh, bro? Ride out. I'm going to give you way more than an hour. It might be a time I'm getting sleepy. I'm about to go to sleep. I'll give you the phone. Huh, bro? Ride out. I'll give you way more than an hour. But I don't want to say to him, why the hell you ain't buy the time from me? Because then it makes me sound like a hater. And then if it gets repeated to tag, yeah, Bill said I could just buy time from him. It make it seem like I'm trying to like block his business. And then that could be a potential issue me and Tags have one day in the future. I steer clear of saying something like that. But I told him, I say, listen, bro, what I think you should do is, I think you should give that man that food back before you eat anything out of it. And tell him, as far as that phone, you want to pay him $25 per week or $25 for 10 hours. You need to specifically know how many hours you're getting, bro. Because I'm telling you, take it from somebody who's been locked up for, I think I was in for seven years at that time. I say, bro, take it from somebody who's been here for seven years. I promise you, that does not sound right. It don't sound right, period. So he like, yeah, I'm hollering, bro. But I could tell by the way he dismissed it, he wasn't going to holler at him. So I just, I'm like, all right, I'm going to let you do you. You know what I'm saying? I kicked back. I went and hit the shower, came back, got on my phone. When I came back, he wasn't in the room. I looked down on the floor. 
The fool wasn't there. I'm curious to know what it is. He just took all this food. Cause this is my long as he been my roommate. This is my first time I seen him with a good amount of food. So now I'm just curious to know. You know, I like to know what type of habits my roommate got. So I know if your ass can get out of here again. So later on, I'm in the dorm. I hit them down there. They downstairs making a bunch of noise. I go down there like I'm about to get some ice just to look. But they down there in the corner shooting dice. And I see him down there. So that's what it was. He was a gambler. I don't understand how the hell this dude could gamble so good at 20 years old. I'm 28. I ain't. I don't know how to shoot dice. I can't play poker. Uh, it's a game in prison they got called Skinny. They love it. I can't do that. I can't do no card games. Like I just ain't grow up. I, I, I was never interested in stuff like that, bro. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say about another two weeks went by. Now, dude, been still using Tag's phone every day for an hour. So now I'm guessing I felt bad because I'm like, damn, I was wrong. And I don't want bro to look at me like a hater or like I'm trying to say some sucker stuff about tags by telling them it don't sound right. Because, bro, two weeks done went by the man still using the phone every day. So I'm like, damn. So I told him one day, I said, bro, I don't want you to think I'm a hater or nothing or that I had something against tags because I told you that ain't sound right. And I see everything been going smooth and ain't been no issues, but... I'm just letting you know that's usually how it go, bro. But I just don't want you to think like, damn, big bro was trying to hate enough. He was like, no, nah, it's all good, bro. Somebody else had told me the same thing. So I know, but Tag, he just rocked with me, bro. He just rocked with me. I'm like, all right, for sure. One thing I know about being in prison, sometimes people do attach to you and rock with you, bro. And I have done that to people before. But this is how I know for a fact it wasn't what he was saying. If Taz just rocked with you and he just seen something in you the way I did when I say you remind me of my little brother, he wouldn't have never put you on the door. He wouldn't have never told you, get out the dorm. At least I tried to go find you another room. He straight up told you, get out the dorm, go to the hole. Then after that, later on, he come back and try to offer you food and phone time. So it could be a few things going on here. It could be something Stone Mountain holding back and not wanting me to know. Or it could be something Tags got going on and Stone Mountain don't even know yet. Or it could be Tags realized Stone Mountain had access to getting on the phone, calling his folks and getting some money. So now he's just trying to map that situation and get the money out of Stone Mountain folks. Which, I mean... It don't seem like he finessing him. He ain't lying to him. He ain't hurting him. So I guess he's not wrong, but he is wrong for fake kicking it. Like, he just rock with dudes so strong knowing it's all about the money. But I know for a fact at this point, it's either one, two, three of them things going on. So I kind of leave it alone because there is a possibility it's something Stone Mountain not telling me, but that's his business. He's grown. So them dudes come out. I hear them say, skin game, man. Skin game, man. That's how they make the announcements when they ready to play this game called Skinny. Like I said, I don't know what the hell they doing, bro. They got the deck of cards turned, like, facing down. And then I guess they deal cards and they pick a card. And then somebody just pull one that they can't see and they flip it over. And they pull it and flip it over. And I'm a, I think the way it go, whoever card come first, you lose. Whoever card come next, you lose until everybody disqualified. And the last person who card never came, they the winner. I think that's how it go. I don't know. That's just from what I observed from watching so many people play it over the years. Dudes go out there, skin game, man. Soon they go to screaming skin game. My roommate jump up, grab the fool. He got run out there. He be winning sometime. Now. I ain't gonna lie. So he comes to me one day. He like, hey, Bill. Hey, Bill, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, I just lost down here on the skin game. Man, I need you, bro. Please, bro. Put me in the game, bro. I just need about $5, bro. Man, you give me five dollars, bro. I'm about to strike, and I'm gonna give you your five back plus an extra five. I did it the first time, bro. I be having buku food all in the locker box on the floor sometime, hanging from a net bag on the side of the box. I get a dude the five dollars. He go down there, he strike. He came back up there with a big ass net bag full of food, pulled it all out on the floor. He like, yeah, big bro, I got them folks. I struck on their ass. What you want, bro? Just pick your ten dollars, bro. You can pick ten dollars. I get me ten dollars. I'm like, cool. And the next day, he loses every single item he had. Every single item he loses. He comes back to me and say the same thing, big bro, man. Give me about five dollars, bro. I lost all that. But so I started telling him, I say, listen, bro. 
I'm going to tell you what you should do. When you strike like that and you got all of that food, a whole bunch of food like that, you should take half of it and start your own store. Be the store man so you can credit stuff out. So now you constantly got food coming every week. Then you take pressure off your family calling them, asking them for food. He like, yeah, 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 I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that next time I strike. But you think you can give me like $5, big bro? So I say, cool. I get a man $5 worth of food. He go down there. He strike again, bro. I don't know how this little dude so good. Now he done struck, bro. He done struck so good. He got one of the dudes in the dorm mad. Do that like he want to fight him. You know what I'm saying? But you got other people like, man, you can't get mad about that. You lost. You a man. You lost. It is what it is. You shouldn't have been gambling. So I guess he felt like it was another person at least willing to either take up for Stone Mountain or just, you know, like you wrong, bro. So he ain't take it that far, but I felt like dude wanted to fight him. So next Stow Day come. We on Stow Day. The man asked me, this is when I realized something wasn't right. I'm in there counting my food up on my bed. The man asked me, hey, B, I can use your phone real quick. Call my folks, pick up this cash app so I can buy me some food. I knew something was wrong because you on a phone contract with tags. Why is you trying to use my phone? You know what I'm saying? I let him use it, though. He called his folks. I hear him talking to his folks. They sent him like $50, I think. I was selling food. So he was getting ready to walk out the room after he got the money. Because he told his folks, hold on, I'm about to tell you where to send it to. So he told him, I'm going to call you right back. I'm about to find out where to send it to. So he gave me the phone, man. He was walking to the door. Then he turned around. He said, matter of fact, you selling food? I said, yeah. He said, man, I'm going to spend a 50 with you. What you going to give me? I told him, I'm going to give you $30. Now, usually, at that time, it was half. If you give me 50, you only getting 25 in food. But I told him, I'm going to give you 30. Just threw an extra five on there. You know, you're my roommate. So he called his folks right back. He said, hey, send the cash out here. So I told him the cash out. $50 came through. I went to the net bag that I had, that I been had hanging, and I just gave him $30 out of that. So I hooked it back up. Later on, they go by. He been gambling all day, bro. He been gambling all day. They got a table downstairs. Like in and out, when I'm in and out the room, I see him down there. He just been gambling his ass off all day long. I'm outside the room chilling. He back inside the room now. They done gambling. He done lost. He done lost all his food. And it's so crazy, bro. Like, damn, you just got this food. You know what I'm saying? You just lost everything. I hated it, bro. But sometimes when I used to see him lose, I used to have to let him learn his lesson, bro. I can't always keep. You know, you got to learn. You got two type of people, bro. You got a type of person that can learn from my mistake and listen when I talk. Or some people got to get burnt by that fire themselves. They got to learn from their own mistake. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out there chilling on the rail. I think I was smoking a Chris Brown CD. Taz walk up, frowned up. Hey, Bill. Hey, C. Bill. I'm like, what's up, bro? Your roommate in the room? I'm like, yeah, I can go holler at him, bro. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Now, that's a respect thing. It ain't like he's scared of me or nothing by asking me. It's a respect thing to ask somebody, especially like, he know this my room. Like this, me and my roommate room, but I've been in here way longer than my roommate. I got a lot going on. I'm respected. This is my room. He knows that. So he know he can't just run off in my room trying my roommate any kind of way because then that could cause a problem with me. So I tell him, yeah, go ahead. I'm cool. So he go in the room. And about, probably about 20 seconds later, he comes walking out. And all I know he's saying is, Give a damn, better have my money. I know that. Better have my money. I'm going to get it something. I'm going to get it one way or the other. Better have my money. So when he walk off, I instantly step in the room. I'm like, what the hell Taz talking about? What y'all got going on? He like, man, he just tripping, bro. You know what I'm saying? He keeps trying to brush it off and downplay it. He tries to walk past me. And I felt bad for stopping him, bro, because I feel like he grown, Bill. Let him learn his lesson. Bro, I swear, I promise you, this man kind of looked like my little brother. He remind me of my little brother so bad. And I'm just like, damn, bro. I stopped him, bro. I grabbed him. I'm like, hold up, bro. So he like pushed my arm. He like, what you doing? I'm like, bro, listen to me, bro. Don't get yourself killed in this prison, folks. When I said that word, it's like he stopped. His eyes got big. And I guess he just like, I guess he really hit home. Like, it really can't happen. He like, what you mean? I say, bro, Taz been locked up a long time, bro. That man got a life sentence without the possibility of parole. If that man feel like you playing with him about a little money and he whack you, bro, he's not going to get no extra time, folks. It's going to hurt your family because you ain't never coming home. You don't got that much time. I think little bro probably had like a six, nah, he had like a four-year sentence. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you don't got that much time. Do not be in here playing with people, bro. These little stuff like snacks and stuff, you got some people that take this stuff serious. They will take your life about it, little bro. And, bro, to be honest, you kind of remind me of my little brother. That's why I kind of be like, that's why I ain't let you go to the hole that day. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, bro, just, just. So I asked him again, like, what do y'all got going on? He was like, man, he talking about I owe him $25, but I gave him $25 already. I'm like, when did you give it to him? He said, man, like two weeks ago when I first started using the phone, a little over two weeks ago. I'm like, bro, do you not remember me telling you it don't work like that? Ain't nobody giving you $25 for an hour a day forever. There is a time you got to renew that money, bro. He was like, yeah, bro, I know it. I know it. So he walks out of the room. Man, walked straight back in the room. I was like, hey, bro. You think you could give me $5 so I could run down here on this skin game and I'm a strike? And I wanted to give it to him, bro, to give him a chance uh, to get the money. The reason I didn't, number one, I don't want Taz to see him gambling and then feel like, oh, he playing with my money. He got money. Even though Taz done seen him gambling all day, done seen him lose that whole cash out. So that's why Taz feeling tried because he like, bro, you could give me $15 in food versus giving me a $25 cash out. So I tell him, no, bro. And I just tell him no, bro, because it's like, number one, like I say, I don't want Taz to feel no type of way. And number two, bro, we're not about to keep doing this. We got to go and break this. I done did it twice already. I'm not about to keep doing this. I'm not about to supply your gambling habit. We not just, we not about to do that. Say like, damn, bro, I just cashed out with you. I just spent my money with you. I'm like, that ain't got nothing to do with me, little bro. That's what you chose to do. You got to manage your, in prison, you got to treat your snacks like money. If you was on the streets, Money management, bro, you got to manage this because this is your lifeline in here. This is what you're going to eat when you get hungry. This is what you're going to use if you want to smoke. This is what you're going to use if you want to use the phone. Bro, you got to really treat this like money. So he leave out the room. I had an officer call, yard call. At this time, I was trying to get on my whole workout thing. I was just off and on with it, bro. But I want to run. So I put in my little headphones. I had some little wireless head earbuds. Pull my hat down over it. Pull out my phone, went to my music player, turned on that young Dolph. It's Dolph. Hey, man, Dolph, my favorite rapper, man. Rest in peace, Dolph, man. So I turned that Dolph all the way up. I change out into my gym shorts and my gym shoes and a little T-shirt. And I go outside. I'm running. I'm trying to run laps around the whole yard. It's a big-ass yard. I'm trying to run around the whole thing. You know, I'm off and on. I ain't running the whole time. Now, big boy got tired. <laughs> off and on. I come back in. Now, it's a race. We only got... Six showers in the dorm, but two of them broke. So it's only four showers we got that's working. Now it's like 20 of us that went on the yard. So it's four showers, 20 people hot and sweating. So it's a race. We come back running in the dorm. Everybody trying to run and hurry up and get to their room, grab their towel, they rag, they soap, hurry up, run to the shower so you can try to be the first one in the shower. Now I go running towards the step. When I'm running towards the step, I see like five people at the table. I see Stone Mountain. He smiling. He like, boy, you been out there getting it in, ain't it, big bro? I'm like, hell yeah. I ain't really look at him, though. I see him, but I ain't really paying no attention. I'm running up the steps. When I get to the top of the steps by the room, Stone Mountain was like, hey, big bro. Hey, C. Bill. So I look down at him. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, I have been busting these folks' ass, boy. I have been busting their ass. And I look down next to him, bro. Big ass pile of food, bro. I'm talking about all surrounded by him on the floor, bro. Big ass pile of food. So I run in there. I'm like, that was up, bro. I run in there, grab all my stuff, run back to the shower. I made it in time, bro, because the other three was full. They had already jumped in there. I go hit the shower, get right, come back out. When I'm coming back out, walking around the range, going back to my room, bro, he got even more food, bro. And the other people he was gambling, they was down to their last little snacks in their hand. You could tell they were mad at hell. Stone Mountain got all the food on the floor, bro. So he done mess around and struck them out of that. So now they like, I heard one dude walk away talking about, man, you cheating some type of way. He like, I ain't cheating. I just know how to play. I've been playing cards forever, man. I've been gambling, man, since I was about 13. I just know how to play. So he come back up there to the room. He like, CB, let me see your net bag. So I gave him one of mine. I, I used to keep extra net bags. So he took his mine, came, filled it up twice, and still had to go fill it up two more times. He came, pulled it all on the floor. Went down there again, filled it up two more times, came back, pulled it all out on the floor. We just sitting here chopping it up and stuff. So I said, you straighten that business out with tags? So he said, no, nah, not yet. I said, listen, little bro, this is what you do. Take $15 out of that food and go give it to tags right now, bro. 
go pay that man, straighten that debt out. Woo woo woo. So he like, yeah, I'm a, uh, that's what I'm about to go do, bro. So I leave out. I need to get some ice water. I just left out the shower. Go downstairs, get some water while I'm down there. My homeboy come up to me. Folks be cooking all the time. He fought. He like, hey, C.B., you trying to go in on the pocket, though? They call a meal. So I said, yeah, we can do it. What we going to do? He said, man, I'm trying to cook something, bro. What you got up there? I said, I got whatever you need. So he come up to the room with me. My roommate wasn't in there. I guess he just stepped out and went somewhere. His food everywhere. He like, damn, boy, you got food everywhere. I'm like, no, nah, that's my roommate food. So we went over to my side of the room. I'm like, just get whatever out the box. I sit down on the bed. Mess around with my phone. He going through my box. He like, damn, bro, you ain't got no refried beans? I buy refried beans every single week. I'm like, hell yeah, I got refried beans in there. He like, bro, there ain't no refried beans in here. I get up. I'm like, watch out. I get up, go in my box. I'm looking through my box. I don't see no refried beans. I don't see no cheese puffs. I know for a fact I had this in my box, bro. I noticed I got like three bags of fireballs. I don't never buy no damn fireballs. Then... They got the beef and cheese sticks. Man, I got about 10 of them, bro. I like beef and cheese sticks, but I only had one. I didn't have I, I didn't have no damn 10. I got 10 beef and cheese sticks, like three bags of fireballs. And I think I had like two or three butterfingers and a uh and a peach soda in my box. Now I got buku food in here, but I know for a fact these items was not in my box. So I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. So I instantly looked down at Stone Mountain food. He got several bags of refried beans, several bags of cheese puffs, but I can't say it's mine because he was just down there gambling. So I tell my uh, bro, I'm like, man, go tell my roommate, come here real quick, and then just step out. So he go holler. He's like, say, Stone Mountain. He like, see, Bill, won't you? Stone Mountain, come back up there, run up there. He like, what's up, B, bro? I'm like, you had put some food in my box? He was like, oh, yeah, 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 hell yeah. I just looked out for you, big bro. I put you about, man, I put you about $13 in there. So I'm like, why the hell you did that? Why did you put some food in my box? And I'm, I went to getting ready to tell, like I had really forgot damn near about my refried beans. I was getting ready to tell him, bro, you don't put no food in nobody box, bro. Don't you know back in the day, stuff like that was a sign before somebody come take your manhood or that's a sign that you trying to do some fruity stuff. I was getting ready to tell him the meaning of that and don't ever put no food in my box. And in the process of me getting ready to start talking about this little dude said, yeah, bro, I was trying to ask you again, but you was going on the yard, bro. So I had you grab like $5 out your box. And I went down there and struck, bro. So I, I did more than double it, put it back in your box. I said, bro, you took some food out of my box? He said, yeah. I said, what you took? He said, refried beans, cheese puff. Bro, I was so mad. My blood instantly went to boiling, bro. It pissed me off so bad that... You asked me for something. I told you no. I been told you don't ever go in my box and take nothing. Bro, you went in my box. You basically just stole, bro. You replaced it, but you went in my box. I was so mad, bro. While this little dude was talking, I hit him in the mouth, bro. I hit him about three, four more times, and then he ran out the room. He didn't even swing back. I felt bad. I ain't gonna lie. But I felt bad for him running, but I didn't feel bad. Because it's like, bro, you got to learn this lesson, bro. There's no way in the hell you went inside my box while I was gone and took anything out of it. So he running back out the room. He's like, what the f***, bro? Man, come on, man. His lip was busted all over. I'm like, man, get your It's on the door. Now I was just spazzing. I ain't even care. I was mad as hell. So my guys come up there. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, man, pack this nigga. He going on the door. Get the f*** out my room, bro. So I'm spazzing out. I'm blowed. Folks and them tell him, man, watch out, watch out. So they come in there talking to me, trying to calm me down. Man, me and folks and them in the room. It's like three of my guys, bro. We in the room probably about 10, 15 minutes. They done packed all his property up. It's just laying on the floor. They packed up everything. And next thing you know, while we sitting here talking about 10, 15 minutes later, somebody come to the door. Another one of my guys come to the door. Do, 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 do. He opened the door. He like, hey, G, make sure all your stuff put up, man. We might about to be going on lockdown. I said, wow, what's going on? He said, man, that boy Taz got that boy Stone Mountain in there tied up. Man, he's shocking him. He's shocking him like electrocuting the man. He just pulled the man's pants down, talking about he about to stick the broom up his So I'm like, what? So he's like, yeah. The guys I'm in the room with go to laughing. I sat down, bro, had my head down like this, and I was just thinking the dude made me so mad he went in my box. But I know he don't know no better, bro. I know he's just young and naive, you know what I'm saying? 
And I swear, bro, I just went to think about my little brother again, how naive he be when I talk to him on the phone, little mistakes he be making. And it's like, damn, I hate for somebody to do my little brother like that. Man, I thought about it for like another minute. Man, I jumped up, grabbed the candy bar. I told my guys, I said, come on, bro, let's go get little bro out there wrong. So they looking at me confused, like, what? They're like, man, you just popped the man out. I'm like, yeah, bro, but come on, bro. He, he ain't been locked up but a couple months. Dude, 20 years old. That man talking about sticking a broom up his... Come on, bro. Hell no. Nah. So they went to seeing it the way I was seeing it. Bro, we went down to the Taz room. One of my guys knocked on the door. Taz was in the process of saying, hold on. But my guy snatched the door open. Bro, when we walked in here, bro, I swear, I promise you, bro, my eyes damn near watered up, bro. And it's so crazy because I just swung on this dude. But for me to have this feeling for him, bro, he was laying down on the floor. He was tied up. His hands were tied behind his back. His feet was tied up together. His pants and drawers was pulled all the way down. Tags was standing there smiling with a broom. He had the broom stick in his hand. And he had some, like he was pulling his hand out the jar of Vaseline like this, putting it on the tip of the broom stick. Tags, homeboy, had two cords from the fan motor inside the wall. And the other two cords, like when we was walking in when Taz was saying, hold on, I seen little bro on the floor like, Ugh. he did like that. Taz homeboy was putting the cords on him, bro, electrocuting the man some type of way. So when we walked in the room three deep like that, Taz looking at us, so bro stopped shocking him. He look up at us like, what the hell going on? I said, man, untie that man right now, bro. He gone, he's up out of here. That $25 he owe you, I'm about to get it to you right now. Go on, untie that man right now. So Taz like, c Bill, but this ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Don't do that. Don't do that, c Bill. This ain't got nothing to do with y'all. That man play with me about my money. Man, he about to pay. I'm about to teach him a chain gang lesson. Don't do that, c Bill. This ain't got nothing to do with you. One of my little guys stepped from the side of me. He had a big old sharp candy bar. He stepped from the side of me. He said, you heard what he said? Untie him. What you talking about? Are we just finna pop on y'all? You know what I'm saying? So dude, see, we said he know we dead serious. He know we coming, we not coming to play. The dude that was over there by the by the wall, he unplugged the cords. He untied a little bruh. He get up, man, he crying, bruh, his whole face red. I tell the man, go to the room, bruh. He leave out, he go to my room. I told Taz, I say, bruh, I don't usually get in nobody's business, bruh, but bruh, you's a real goofy, bruh. Like, you really make me want to do something to you right now. But the reason I ain't going to do it is because I know dude was wrong. But, bro, for you to have a little 20-year-old in here, Tyler, even though he grown, bro, you was a real goofy for that, bro. So he knew I was dead serious, and he knew I had them members with me. So he wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of calmed down. He kind of piped down a little bit. So we leave out the room. We go back to my room. All my guys coming there with me. So now the other guys that seem, they are coming up to my room because they don't know what's going on. Soon I went in there, uh, Stone Mountain in there, still in there crying, wiping his face off and stuff, bro. I told one of my guys, I say, man, Stone Mountain food was packed up. I say, take $20 out that bag and put it in a net bag. Go give it to uh, Taz, bro. So he only owed him 15 which equals a $25 cash out. But I just made him put an extra five in there. So I looked up at Stone Mountain. I was like, you got a problem with him giving him extra five? So he said, no, nah, hell no, nah, bro, give it to him, bro, give it to him. So they went out there and give it to him. I'm like, bro, you just had this fool. I just told you, pay the man. Why you didn't take him to food, folks? He was like, bro, I was about to, bro. I promise you, CBL, bro, I was about to. I was about to go do it. Bro, I swear, bro, just looking at the dude. But like, I had to turn my head, bro. Play it off like I was doing that, bro. I promise you, he just reminded me of my little brother, bro. My little brother, I'd die about him. You know what I'm saying? I'd go bananas about him. He just reminded me, about, reminded me of my little brother. So he leave out the room. I hear some noise, bro. I hear uh, tags and them out there making some noise, some hooping and hollering and stuff. I go out the room, and I step out the room, I hear like a whole bunch of shuffling, feet shuffling. When I like step out the room, all I see is all of my guys running down the tags room, like running. So I run back in the room, my candy bar was on the bed, I snatched it, took off running, I took off running down there too. Man, when I took off running down there to the door and was finally able to get around them and look, Man, it was like three of them in that busting tags, bro. And you know what I'm saying? I didn't jump in it then. I couldn't even get through, bro. Like, it was so many of them trying to get to tags. It was like three of them hitting them. So then I got, like, closer into the door to pull the door up. 
And then I told them to stop, hold up, stop. So when they all stopped, they came like towards me. Taz was like towards that way, towards the wall, man. Taz bleeding everywhere, bro. He bleeding out the face, the head, all on the shoulders. So they're like, what's up, bitch, bro? Man, what you, what's up, bitch, bro? But they know they got to listen to me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just, I ain't going to go into it, but I had some pull at that time. They had to listen to me. So I'm like, what's up? He like, man, I came down here to give him the food. This pulled out the candy bar on me. Like he was about to pop. So I just popped on his. So he, I'm talking about, bro, he's leaking, bro. I tell them guys, I say, man, all y'all get out their room right now, man. They man mess around and die. We're going to all have a charge. Everybody get out their room. It's over with. Y'all bust them. Y'all pulled them out. It's over with. Get out the room. So they all left out the room. They stood outside the door because I was still in the room. I told them, I'm like, Taz, bro, you wrong. You pulled the candy bar out. However you felt, it is what it is, bro. Go on, go to the hole. Get yourself cleaned up. Go on, go to medical. Tell them folks, you just was tripping and you bust yourself just to keep the commotion down. Ain't going to be no issue with my guys and none of that. And uh, he ended up leaving out. But, you know, we went on lockdown anyway. They didn't believe the story. They came back, pulled the cameras. It was kind of blurry, but they had a few people. And uh, they locked a few of my guys down. We was locked down for like two weeks. They let us out. Man, do you know I'm talking to this dude, Stone Mountain, the whole time, letting him use the phone, giving him chain gang game. I'm teaching him about stuff, teaching him all kind of stuff, do's and don'ts. Now I'm more on him. Like, bro, that man could have took your life. That man could have... I told him straight up, anybody that pull out a broom and do that, bro, it wouldn't have been a broom next time. That man could have took your manhood and took your life. Do not get caught up in stuff with people. Bro, the same week we came off lockdown, another dude, chain gang vet, been locked up forever, come to my room and say, hey, CB, man, you know, I know about the situation y'all had going on last time. I know you rock with your roommate, bro, but he owe me $50, bro. And I'm trying to get my money. I don't want to have to do nothing to him. Woo, 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 woo. At the time, he told me that my roommate was down there gambling. Instantly. I said, we're not finna go through this again. Say, Stone Mountain, come here. So he told me, hold on, big bro. I'm I say, man, all that. Come here. So he come up there. I'm like, bro, you owe him $50. He like, yeah. I'm like, bro, pack your stuff up. Get out of my room right now. He like, big bro. I say, bro, pack your stuff up. Get out of my room right now. So dude was like, oh, no, I see, bro. I ain't trying to. I say, it ain't about what you're trying to do. I done been teaching this man, giving this man. I mess around and get myself hurt by trying to look out for you and stand up for you because I'm talking about you remind me of my little brother, but you're not learning, bro. I see now you're the type that got to get burnt by that fire yourself. You got to learn yourself. I don't put my guys at jeopardy and you're not even affiliated because I feel like you remind me of my little brother and you're still doing the same thing. Bro, pack your stuff up right now. This is the last time I'm telling you, pack your stuff up and get out of my room, bro. So he packed his stuff up with nobody else, let him come in their room and he went to the hole, bro. And uh, he stayed in the hole for like a year. And then I think he got transferred off to a transitional center. And that's probably the best thing could have happened to him, bro. Transitional center is when you, uh, like you work, you get a real paycheck, you go outside and work a real job. You just got to come back in and report by a certain time. I ain't talked to him ever since then. And, um, yeah, man, it's just best to just, you, if you get placed in a situation, bro, where you caught up in something and you, you get blessed out of it, bro, you got to change folks. You got to change ways, little bro. It's like, like people who get out and go back so much, bro, you was blessed to make it out again, bro. Don't. Do that same stuff. And that's what I was trying to teach the Stone Mountain. And I'm encouraging everybody, bro. If you ever in a sticky situation, bro, anything going wrong in life for you, you get blessed to have another opportunity. Do not do the same thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? That just don't make no sense, bro. Do better. Make better decisions. Live better, bro. Make money, not excuses. And follow that Bill Motivation page. I need to get my... uh. I need 4,000 hours of watch time. I got like 2,500 hours right now. I need 4,000. But I love y'all, man. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone. <laughs>